Zoom. Uh, do you want to pause the recording for now? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Emerging Leaders Coaching with DISC. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. This session is being recorded, and it will be posted on our UCI DCE on-demand recording page, as well as YouTube. You will receive a copy via email. Enter the email that you gave uh, when you registered for this session. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you the outline for this session and also give some introduction. My name is Vanessa Yu. I am a program representative for the Business Programs Department at UCI Division of Continuing Education. And next to me here is Brett. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Uh, it's good to be with everybody today. Uh, my name is Brett Trahan, and I'm a marketing program manager um, tasked to help spread the word about all the wonderful programs that we offer here at UCI Division of Continuing Education, especially in the Department of Business. Um, so very excited to um, get to learn a little bit more about uh, Lavesha's expertise here and uh, share that with our community. Great. So first, we'll be giving a brief overview of UCI Division of Continuing Education and also the business programs portfolio. Then we'll introduce and hand over the pre presentation to Lavesha, our guest speaker for today. Zoom has a chat feature that you can use to ask questions. So if you have any technical issues, you can direct those to John from UCI. If you have any questions for Lavesha, please submit the questions to all panelists, as you can see demonstrated here. We'll try to answer questions throughout the session, and we'll also reserve some time at the end for Q&A. Just a brief introduction to UCI Division of Continuing Education. Established in 1962, UCI DCE has served the lifelong learning and career development needs of individuals, organizations, and the community on a local, regional, and global scale. Today, we offer more than 60 industry-relevant certificates and specialized studies programs on campus, online, and at corporate sites. All of our curriculum is taught and developed by industry leaders and seasoned professionals in their fields, just like our guest speaker, Lavesha, today, providing all students the latest content that can be applied to the job right away. And the business programs portfolio uh, consists of a few really popular certificate programs. Um, first, and, and really what I think um, we're well known for is our project management certificate. Um, this program is uh, newly developed based on the most recent version of the PEMBOK guide, and it can actually be completed in just four courses. Um, it's really suited for people who at some point in their career are planning to become a project management professional or PMP, or just have some project-based tasks that they need to complete uh, as, as part of their job. Uh, we also offer a newly developed digital marketing and communications certificate, which goes into both the tactical aspects of, this, uh, of digital marketing, whether that be on uh, Facebook Ads Manager, um, Google Analytics, uh, Google AdWords, but it also gives you a more holistic um, uh, background in the practice of market research or just uh, product marketing. So not just like tactical knowledge, but uh, how to research a product, how to position it in the market, and um, it's, a, it's a really like hands-on program. Uh, we also have another exciting program in uh, the eSports management. So this is uh, delivered in a similar um, accelerated style format and um, that there are just three classes that really bring you up to speed on what it would take to uh, launch your career in the eSports industry. We have industry um, experts who have contributed to that curriculum, so people who are working at companies like Twitch, uh, Blizzard, uh, just to name a few. Uh, we also have some uh, smaller, uh, lighter programs that are in fields like real estate management, uh, meeting and event management. Uh, we have forthcoming courses in human services, and um, we also have a new program available in sport management. So I know that you know, I can talk about what these certificates are all about, but really continuing education for me is, a, is about refreshing your uh, career, uh, refreshing what you have going on uh, professionally, and just kind of like getting out of any 
state that you may feel in, whether it's like a stale uh, job or you just need some type of change or you want a different perspective on, on your profession or what you have going on in the workplace, um, continuing education is a great way to network with peers, um, to grow your uh, sphere of influence, whether it be to uh, introduce yourself to other uh, subject matter experts or uh, just kind of like uh, add more to your life. So not just add to your resume, but to really enhance what you have going on in life and I think meet friends and um, be better at your job and, and hopefully in, in turn be rewarded for that down the line. So. Um, yeah, if, if you have any other questions about uh, what our academic calendar looks like or how to get enrolled in classes, um, you can always reach out to one of our program representatives or program managers like Vanessa. Um, our fall quarter is currently open for enrollment and uh, classes are as short as a few days to a few weeks. So um, don't be shy, reach out, courses are always are, are open for enrollment, there's no um, daunting application process. And we're really uh, the corner of the university that is, is open to the world and is open to people at any age or stage in their life. Thank you, Brett. Yeah. All right, so I'm very excited to introduce Lavesha to everyone today um, and learn more about DISC. She is an innovator, educator, performance coach, and community healthcare advocate, and she is passionate about professional development and growth that improve people, processes, and results. She has over 15 years of experience in medical and communication health education, corporate learning, ed events and communication, business operations, and organizational development. As we mentioned, she is a current instructor here at UCI, um, currently teaching project management for international folks as well as domestic, and also in our meeting and event management program as well. Um, she is an authorized partner uh, with DISC Assessments and Five Behaviors of a Cohesive Team which help organizations successfully move innovative programs and initiatives forward. And as you can see, she's also supported programs in medical device, consulting, nonprofit, and higher education industries. So thank you so much, Lavesha, for being with us today. I will go ahead and hand over the controls to you, and then uh, we'll get your presentation started. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for that great introduction. So today, I want to start off with why we're here. There are several learning objectives we want to cover. We want to define what this tool is and what the purpose it can serve in your business relationships. And then we want to identify leadership principles that should be used in your work environment. Thirdly, we want to analyze how do you leverage your DISC out in your meetings or if you're coaching employees. Finally, we want to discuss an action plan. We want to take all that learning and put it into an action plan so you can implement it, the DISC for yourself or your team. When we talk about leadership, one of the things that people don't recognize right away is communication. Whether you are in a personal relationship or a business relationship, communication is vital for the success of both of those. And looking at leadership, there are very many statistics out there. One statistic is 91% of employees say communication issues drag down the executive work. So we want to get on top of that type of thing. And when I'm teaching project management, I talk a lot about communication in the class, and one statistic from the PMI Institute, which is a project management institute, is that 56% of projects are at risk just due to ineffective communication. This is not even talking about your project charter, your risk register, your budget, any of that, your schedule. It's just purely the communication. That's why it's vital to have a tool in order to navigate whether you're running a project or you're coaching individuals on your team. And when we talk about DISC, I want to introduce the concept. When we talk about this, most people think it's a personality test. 
Yes, it does integrate your personality, but I wouldn't brand it as a personality test. What DISC is really is measures your behavior uh, and observe what things that you're, you're doing that you may not be conscious of. And it's really a tool for dialogue, not to diagnose that certain people are certain styles, which that is an outcome from it, but it's more to create an opportunity to dialogue with your leaders and your employees throughout your organization. And it measures your, your preferences and your tendencies. We all have them. This is just a tool to help us to really announce them more effectively. Well, now you're probably thinking, what settings can we use DISC in? DISC has been used in so many settings, of course, one-on-one -on -one coaching. A lot what I do is I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and, and I have my coachees do an assessment first just to get a baseline to get the conversation started. And a lot of organizations use this for team building. If you, are knowing, if you know the team and the dynamics of each individual, you're able to really have stronger collaborations and move the projects forward more smoothly. And of course, a lot of people use it for new employee orientation classes, just as a jump start to a new organization. And as we go through this presentation, you will understand that there is a style for organization. It's not necessarily formalized, but if you go into an organization, you can feel what type of style that organization is and then how to navigate your own personal style into that in order to be a successful employee. Of course, leadership and executive development. Hopefully as a leader, one of your goals is not only to be a subject matter expert in your field, but to continue to grow professionally and personally to become a more holistic contributor to an organization. And we, finally, we will talk about some um, other aspects of the DISC is how to leverage your adaptive and your natural styles, whether it's within your, your team or it's one-on-one -on -one coaching that you may do with an employee. Now, let's just take a deep dive into the four styles for DISC. Again, it's not a personality, it's more of What's your natural preference you lean toward as far as showing up in a room or showing up in a meeting, showing up at work? The first one is called dominance. Dominance is the style is a person that's direct, forceful, results-oriented, strong will, firm. They're more focused on the task. And then you have influence. A person of influence is very outgoing, high-spirited, optimistic, enthusiastic. They're definitely focused on the people side. Then you have supportiveness. That is a person that is patient, even-tempered, tactful, accommodating. That's the person you want on your team, especially in project management. If you've been on any project, you know all projects it says 70% of projects fail, right? That means that there's some dynamics, not only from the task aspects, but from the people aspect. And sometimes you need a person that is a supportive aspect on your team to help even kill out the chaos. And the supportive person is awesome for that. Then finally, you have the conscientious person. That is gonna be more of your analytical person they're reserved, they're systematic. That's a person you wanna call on if, say if you wanna do a budget and you wanna make sure the numbers are correct and precise before you present them to your key stakeholder or your sponsor of your project. That's a vital person to have on your team as well. You will see these four disc styles, dominance, influence, supportiveness, and conscientious, all make up the word disc and that's where the disc elements come from. To take a deeper dive into dominance, I always think it's important to get an essence of who would, who would represent dominance. Okay, Donald Trump. If you think of Donald Trump, you think of dominance. He's a person that can go in an unfavorable environment 
meaning that everybody is not agreeing on everything. And he's okay to be his most powerful self in that environment. Because again, as we talked about, dominance is a person that's direct and they're a driver toward results. Then we have influence. When you think of influence, a lot of people would think of Oprah Winfrey, Robin Williams, the comedian, or Jay Leno. Any of those individuals will have a favorable um, environment, and that's when they're the most powerful, right? Think about Oprah. She is a magnet to people. She helps connect people, and that's who she is internally and naturally. And when she shows up in an environment, that's when she's her most powerful. So if you have those characteristics, you will be a person in the influence category. The other one, of course, is supportive, or sometimes we call it steadiness. And this person would be like a Mr. Rogers. If you grew up watching Mr. Rogers, he was the nice, calm, a strong ability to work with kids and give them comfort, but then at the same time, educate them in a non-intimidating, calm way. And you think of Barbara Walters. Think about all the interviews Barbara Walters has done with very high profiled people, but she was able to bring a level of calmness and steadiness to get those answers and help them to answer those hard questions that a lot of people weren't able to do. So that's the strength that she brings to that environment. Finally, we have conscientious, or another word we can say is compliant. We think of Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, those are innovators, but they're very technical in what they do. Whether it's, you know, Bill Gates, you know, coming up with his own thing and creating uh, computers and being innovative or Albert Einstein, light bulb, and right, that takes an individual that loves to study, loves to research, loves to be precise in what they're doing. And that's an example of someone that's conscientious. Now we want to take it to the application. So now we understand the four different styles, dominance, influence, conscientious, and steadiness. When you think of dominance, you think of a person who's driving results and wants to be efficient. And those people are really fast paced as well. They like to see what the work that they're doing. They like to see milestones of that we're making progress toward the final goal. And of course, in a lot of project management things, if we have the overall scope of the project, we know what we want to achieve. That could be we want to achieve an event. We want to launch an event for our organization. That's the end result. But we put in milestones to let us know, okay, we ordered the cake. We ordered the venue, we secured all the vendors that we would need in order to expedite recording of the sessions. All those things are milestones to get us to the final thing. And a person in uh, dominance would like to see those type of results and efficiency to let you know that they're not wasting their time. Their time is very important, being a dominance person. Then you have the influence person. This is the bubbly person. This is the person that is going to be the first person to say hi to a new employee or invite the new employee for lunch. Again, this person is outgoing, optimistic, high spirited, and that's going to help bring synergy and positivity in the organization. And the S, I would almost say it's the security. That's the person that I said a lot of time is the, the patient one, the tactful one, the even tempered, the accommodating. And a lot of you sometimes administrative assistants, if you have a CEO and they have administrative assistants, sometimes that person is the steadiness that helps keep that CEO balanced and even kill to get the things that they need to get accomplished during the day. Then we have C, again, conscientious. This person is information. If you ever 
has to file taxes, which we all have. That's a great example of a conscientious person. They're very analytical to make sure that all your tax information is correct, and they're very precise as well. But sometimes those individuals seem to be a little bit more reserved, but they also have value to an organization or a team. I wanted to give some scenarios. I think sometimes that's the best way to learn. And here we have Reagan and Matt. Reagan is the boss and Matt is the employee. And when you do your disk profile, which we'll talk about at the end on how to get that, is that we talk about your natural style. Your natural style is basically when you're at home around your family or hanging out with your friends, Christmas, all that type of interaction, that's your natural style, right? In this example where we have Reagan, her natural style obviously is, is an I. So she's outgoing, bubbly, the life of the party. And then when her adaptive style, she tends to be the same. A lot of times when you look at this, they don't, your natural and your adaptive is not the same because your adaptive is based on the environment that you're in. If you're in a high stress organization, your personality and your traits of how you normally would do things may be adjusted because of the hostility and environment. That alters your style. That's why it's the adaptive component. Then we have Matt over here. Matt's natural style, it says he's a C. Again, he's an analytical individual. He likes data. He would be great on a team to provide that detail analysis if, if that was a component of the job. And he has some S, which means that he's even killed and he likes, he doesn't like conflict probably. For example, if we have Matt goes into Reagan's office and Matt just goes right into the data, that is fine, but he has to understand that his boss is an I. So his boss wants probably do small talk. Oh, how was your weekend? Oh, how was your daughter doing in college? Those are type of things that a C would have to learn from and for having a boss that's an I. He doesn't want to jump right into the information. He wants to do a little small talk. So that's an opportunity for a C person that's high in C to force themselves, even though I know I know a lot of C's, force themselves to try to gain that rapport to complement and adapt to the, your style of your boss, which is an I. That's one thing to keep in mind. So that's one scenario when you have someone that's more technical versus someone that's outgoing. You don't need to change and transform to them, but you do need to adapt in order for there to be a strong working relationship between your boss and to better communicate um, data and information. Now, the boss may want that. In this example, you see that Reagan is low on C. Therefore, Matt would need to adapt a little bit more to educate his boss on the data, but she's going to want that energy in the beginning in order to digest that type of information because that's not her strong area. Okay, so then. We have another one. We have Aaron and Megan. Here we have a total different scenario. Aaron, which is the boss in this case, is a high D. And Megan is a high C. Again, we have, as you remember, I said in the beginning, 
D's are fast paced, they're results oriented. It's like, you know, Donald Trump was one example of a D, right? And C was like a Bill Gates or Albert Einstein. Those are two distinct communication styles. C is definitely more about the detail. They're going to have spreadsheets. They're going to have the backup research. They're going to have all the elements in order to convey the information to their boss. Where a D is going to get impatient. Aaron is going to get impatient with Megan. Nothing personal is their personal communication style. Aaron wants things quickly and to the point and be direct. And these results oriented. Where Megan may be going through each and every, if she had five pages of data, she'd probably be going through each and every page of the data, which would drive a D person insane because they want what's the bottom line how can we move forward on this project and this this dyno this dynamic is important for megan to adjust and have maybe a overview maybe a one-page summary of what the results were from the project versus going into starting with the detail now one thing i had to learn as an employee is different people require different levels of information. I remember one time I was talking to a CEO and I was really proud of the information that I gathered for him. I had like 14 pages of data and I said, here's the information I have. And he's like, okay, well, can you boil that down to like one page? Right, it wasn't a personal thing, it was a preference. Again, like we said, this is, preferences and tendencies. So in order for the collaboration between Aaron and Megan to be more cohesive, it's important that Aaron and Megan have a meetings of the mind where Megan understands her boss is a D and she's gonna give him that one level, one page high level information and maybe attach it to the detailed information to uh, email and when he's on the airplane or when he has time, he can take a deeper dive into that information. And then Megan's expertise can be leveraged because then he can call her and say, okay, I need more explanation on that. That's when Megan's going to shine in this scenario. Again, it's important that we understand each other's style. And we have Linda versus Jay. Linda in this example is a high I, very high I, and J is between a S and a C, right? But you know his natural style is S and C. And then when he has to go into a different environment, he's pretty even kill. So that's how you, you see the S. One of the elements of an S S, which is steadiness, is that they're even-tempered, patient, tactful, accommodating. So he's pretty consistent in his natural and adaptive style. And now, because of that, he's able to really successfully probably handle a high-energy I, which in most can, uh, cases, if this was a C and an I, it would be very dynamic or if it was a D in the I, it would definitely be dynamic because the D again wants quick and to the point and where the I is a little bit more social and wants to start off social before going into a project or heavy data or analysis. And this component, because there's um, C and S, especially this S, it helps balance out the energy of an I, and they're able to collaborate on projects a little better. But again, an I is very high energy, and that's why it's great that Jay will be able to accommodate Linda in a lot of aspects because he has that level of patience. But it's still important that the communication of Jay with his analytical background with as being a C is able to interject and project itself in order to talk to Linda, which is high I, 
which may in some cases take over the conversation. So it's a, it's a, a balance. Once you know your style is how to integrate it. And then in this component, it will be a great opportunity to do so. Then from an individual coaching standpoint, just to see what your natural style is and your adaptive, this is an example of Victor. And as you notice, Victor is a high I. He's in the 78 percentile. And he seems to be pretty even kill. But you notice that his C goes down in his adaptive style. If, for example, if Victor was in his natural at home, right, his natural style is what he normally does on a day-to-day -day basis, he's maybe he does all the bills in the household. And so he's very C and gets everything organized, right? But when he goes to work, his job doesn't require a lot of uh, C elements or analytical data. So that's why it's important to adapt his style to that. Now, if he was in an organization where he says, okay, I'm really missing using more of my analytical aspects, that's an opportunity for the leader to coach Victor on other opportunities in organization or even changing his work assignment where he's doing more analytical aspects versus maybe D driver um, aspects of his work. Again, S and a C, and he wants to bring up his C, he wants to go more his natural, and sometimes organization, if it's stress in the organization, or if it doesn't seem to be a culture fit, anything like that, this is an opportunity to coach your employee on maybe advancing them to a different role or helping them to leverage their natural style. And a lot of times when organizations are hiring, if they use this, sometimes, you know, it's not allowed, but if this or anything is, is allowed, it tends to go to your natural style. Because if you think about it, if you align your natural style with your ideal job, that's when you're going to be your most productive. That's when you're going to love your job. That's when you're going to show up ready, willing, able to do any thing in order to be successful to your job, and you're going to give probably 100% versus if it's something that is not really in your natural uh, style, it may be a struggle sometimes. So this is important for leaders to look at the difference between the natural and their adaptive style of their employees and use it as an opportunity to coach and opportunity to manage performance as well. Finally, we have Thomas. Thomas is naturally, he's a high D. So when you think of high D, you think of a person who can take charge, a person who's a leader naturally. It could be an entrepreneurial type of spirited person. They are about getting things done on time, on schedule, and expedited. A lot of project managers may have some aspects of this, but again, a project manager can be any of these disc style. As I taught in my class um, on project management, we actually do a disc assessment and we do some team work so we can see how the different dynamics will play out in a, in a team if you had these different styles and how to adapt to the different styles in order for your team to stay cohesive and that you can increase communication on projects, and then really understand how to leverage the styles to drive success of your programs. For this, you see that he's natural as a D, and it's pretty much even kill, right, except for his S. Again, when his adaptive style, right, say he's in an organization that's higher energy is a high potential organization and it's fast paced. At home, maybe he can have more of the S, but when he's at work, he decreases his even temper, his patient, his accommodating demeanor because it requires for him to be more of a driver, which is the D. Again, knowing all these elements help you to show up in a different way to work. 
now you're probably asking, okay, those are great scenarios on how to leverage DISC and how to work with my manager, how to work with my leader, how to leverage any opportunity to coach or just show up to meetings in a different way. First, you need to, to do the assessment. Of course, there's a free one, but the free one doesn't give you the detail analysis. It just really gives you your style. But if you get with an authorized partner like myself, and there's so many other ones you can look up on the website for authorized partner in DISC, and when one of those people come up, you, you know, connect with them, pay for the assessment, and they send you a link. And that link, it gives you the assessment, and you take the assessment probably 20, 30 minutes top to actually take the assessment, and then you can get a detailed report. And that detailed report, it kind of tells you about other styles and how you will work with other styles and how you can be a more effective communicator, especially if you're doing sales. It's great for that as well, how to close sales more effectively by understanding the person on the other side and how to meet their needs based on their communication styles in order to make it a win-win scenario. And then finally, of course, defining your natural and adaptive styles and the areas that you're strong in and how to match the organization that you're working with, even the leader, if it's possible, when you're going on interviewing. There's, based on how I describe the different elements, the D style, the I style, the C style, and the S style, you will get some indicators of what that person is on a high level. And then you're able to determine how to answer specific questions based on the person who's asking them. For example, if you're in an interview and you see that the person is very detail oriented or they're analytical, very precise and systematic in the conversation, as a person who's interviewing for the job, that's a great opportunity for you to leverage your expertise and experience that you have and bring up an example of where you had to give a detailed report or where you had to analyze data or whether you had to overcome something that you had to get some support information from. That's a good synergy and a good opportunity to match that person and be adaptive in that environment. Again, so to recap, keys to leadership, communication. I know it's simple and there's a lot of good books on leadership so many things to talk about. I decided to bring out communication because communication is the key factor that stops effective relationships from a standpoint of an employee and a leader. And the number one reason why people leave their job is because of their boss. And if you have an opportunity to turn this around, by understanding your style and getting some ideas of what your leader style is, you have an opportunity to enhance what you're doing at your job and build a better bridge of communication and synergy with you and your boss. And it offers opportunity for the leader to coach, not just on performance. Performance is good, but a lot of, it says 85% of employees would love to be coached. But a lot of times leaders don't have that time or allocate that time to actually do the development part. And that's when the coaching aspects comes in. Performance is easy. It's like, okay, did you get this program completed? Did you get this marketing program launched? Those things you can measure and those are good aspects, but there's two components of leadership. It's the performance element and then it's the coaching. And we have a great opportunity here to bring up the coaching aspects, integrating into us leading employees on our teams and inside of our organization. Again, we also define DISC. We said DISC is dominance, more direct person. And we talked about influence, which is an outgoing, high-spirited life of the party. And then we have a C, a person that's more analytical, reserved, private, focused on the task. And then we have steadiness, the S person. That's your even temper person, the accommodating person that is 
really concerned with the needs of others and it, they really leverage the emotions of how people are are projecting themselves and then they kind of balance that out to make sure everything is calm and and peaceful in order to move projects forward. And maximizing this for your meetings and coaching. If you know your organization, you know, there's not a formalized process for this, not that I'm aware of at least, is that organizations can be one of those disk styles. I know, uh, for example, a medical device company here in Orange County, they're known as a C organization, meaning that they're very analytical. And if you have just an I personality, for example, you're outgoing and that's okay. You can bring that energy to the organization. Diversification is a good thing, but then you need to adapt. If you're gonna work for that organization, you're gonna to have to adapt. So for example, if you're an I and you come up to the meeting and you're energized and you can talk about your bullet points, that's great. But then you have to adapt to your style, your organization style, if it's a C organization, you're gonna to have to bring some, add some more hard data to your presentation along with that energy in order to meet the needs of the organization and also leverage who you really are. And offering coaching for leaders and employees is also a great factor on how employees want coaching has been said by statistics but this isn't a great opportunity. If a leader is new to coaching, a lot of organizations in their HR departments can leverage the DISC tool. If the employee takes the DISC assessment, that will be the first step for them to start to the process of coaching their employees, not just managing their performance, but actually coaching. So that's a good way to maximize the meetings aspect and the coaching for leaders. And deploying DISC for your project teams, I think is a great first thing to do when you're starting a kickoff of a meeting. Of course, when you do project management, you start off with you know what your scope is and then you do a project charter. And once the project charter is signed off, you have a team kickoff meeting. That's a great time to do a DISC assessment understand everybody's style before you take a deep dive into the project details up front you got that baseline and then having different ways that whether it's on a poster board you know different teams if you're an organization that's big on medical device let's use that right if you can have a marketing team you can have a sales team you can have an engineering team you can have a, reg a regulatory team all those teams are working together on one project but they're in different departments so it's a great opportunity to see what the different disc styles are, maybe on a board or sometimes people have war rooms where they come back and intervene to do project status. That's a good way to integrate and deploy the disc um, with your, your teams as well. Again, that's a great recap for us on leveraging disc for emerging leaders and understanding our own personal disc style. So thank you so much for listening to the presentation and I will turn it back over to Vanessa if for any questions. Thank you, Levesha, so much. That was so fascinating. Uh, thank you for sharing the examples of teams and how they have both a natural and adaptive state and, and how, how that all works together. I think it's really fascinating and important for everyone to learn through DISC what their strengths are and then how to leverage that within their teams and in their workplace. So I, I think that's great. Um, we are getting in a couple of questions here um, from some of our audience. Um, one question we have here is, can the DISC profile results change over time? So if someone uh, is a strong D, is it possible that over time they could be stronger in another area? That's a good question. And the answer is yes, but it's based on the environment, right? That's why that adaptive and your natural style, your natural style probably pretty much would stay the same, but if something 
traumatic happen, right? A death or a divorce or you, you moved to a different state, had a different, you know, starting a new role in a whole different industry. All those are factors that influence how you show up and how you want to, you know, receive communication or and give communication. So it can change mm -hmm. over time, but your natural style is probably, you know, it's pretty much going to stay the same, but how you show up as far as adapting to the environment may change dramatically. That's very interesting. Thank hmm. you. Um, can a DISC be performed virtually? So um, can a company reach out to you as, as an authorized um, representative? And can you work with teams that are um, across the country or across the world? Is, is DISC applicable in those situations? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's different versions. There's an online virtual version that you can take. Um, with your teams, like you can take the assessment, but then workshops and things like that can be done uh, virtually as well to give people the baseline, kind of what I kind of did right here, the breakdown of how it works. Mm -hmm. That can be done virtually or inside of organizations as a workshop. So it can be done on both platforms in both ways. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, and then one last question um, that we have here. Uh, someone mentioned uh, MBTI, Myers-Briggs. I think you touched on it earlier, but how does this compare or contrast? Um, would you recommend leveraging both, or is DISC probably the, the better for um, a work environment? Well, I, I would definitely say I, I definitely, my preference is DISC for a work environment, but there's so many tools out there. The way I look at it is that all those different assessments, whether it's Strength Finder, uh, Myers Briggs, DISC, just say those three, for example, all those three are different, but they all tell you the whole story about who you are, right? No one tool is going to be the answer. It's mm -hmm. right because you're a complex individual but you can leverage different things from that. Each one have their strengths and their opportunities for assessing. Like for DISC, you know, I think it's good for the work environment because it kind of puts you into the communication element. Now, Strength Finder is great as well, but it doesn't have as much of the analytics and data behind it as a DISC does. And Myers-Briggs, I feel like, is more of a personality test. And then the DISC is not a personality, but the DISC or gives you how you communicate, how you show up. So each performs a different yeah, a task, basically. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps it up for our Q&A section. LaVeisha, I wanted to thank you again so much for spending time with us today. This was really interesting. Um, we're sharing here LaVeisha's contact information, her website, email address. So if you have any additional questions about this, want to get a sample profile, or even would like her to facilitate a discovery meeting at your workplace, uh, please definitely reach out to her. Um, and then if you have any questions about UCI DCE, the programs that we offer, please we encourage you to visit our website. Enrollment is open now for the fall quarter, uh, and we launch those uh, schedules on a quarterly basis. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or our program director, Stefan Mueller. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Good thank time. you, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you, LaVeisha. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, bye.